Shine. Really nice looking fish. Wow, that's a trophy. That's a hog! Woo! Nice job, you two. There we go. Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. One of the most popular crafts on the water these days is a pontoon. Images of lazily cruising the lake or pulling the kids on tubes most likely comes to mind with pontoons, but rigged out right, you can transform a pontoon into an effective fishing machine. Another one, another nice eater. That's how it's configured. We got our bait station back here with aerated live well. We got tackle trays below. We got our tool holder. And we're gonna do a little fish fry. Similar to any well thought out boat tailored towards fishing, boat control tools are key. Gone are the days where the only way you could fish off a pontoon was to drop the hook. This feels a little better, Keys. All right. Sweet. With powerful trolling motors and modern electronics, it's possible to follow a contour precisely, allowing you, along with a dozen of your friends, to go out and find fish instead of waiting for the fish Ooh. to come find you. We've caught a few bass, we've caught some nice walleye, and I think we were able to show you that pontoons are a really functional fishing boat. We had a good day. Absolutely. Morning, guys. Ryan, DeShane, and McKeon Roberts here from Wired to Fish, and we're at the cabin, the DeShane family cabin in northern Minnesota, and this is a piece of sacred ground for me and my family. And today we're gonna go spend the day on the water out of a pontoon boat, a Lund LX series fish and cruise model pontoon boat that's just totally rigged out for fishing. So it's gonna be a fun day. It's autumn time right now. Walleye should be biting, smallmouth should be biting, and we're gonna show you how to get it done out of your pontoon. All right, let's go. Looks good, Keys. A little cloud cover. I like it. A little bit of sun poking through. Yeah. Pre wind right now. Pre-turnover. Pre it's always a good thing. You know, when we first got the pontoon rigged up, I wasn't sure how I was gonna fish out of it. With the trolling motor up front, we have a long cable where we can run the foot control. And then the Altera also comes with the fob. Being a bass, primarily a bass fisherman on the bow with an Altrex, I was just very used to the pedal control. But I really quickly became accustomed to just standing back here, you know, where this pontoon is really well configured for fishing. You have room, you have rod holders, you have your uh, storage locker for tackle, and then your bait well. And then the transducer is just right off of the tube there, and with a decent enough sized fish finder, I'm staring at my lake map, I'm staring at my 2D sonar, and I'm fishing the fish that I'm seeing. And the nice thing about the pontoon is you have a lot of square footage, so the capacity is significant. You can take eight to 10 people out here fishing, have people spread out throughout the pontoon, and then me as the guide is in the back corner like this, controlling the trolling motor with the fob, baiting hooks, netting fish. But it's just a real efficient way to fish. And if you want to spot lock in your slip bobber and take a seat back here, you know, throw the rod in the rod holder. I'm not giving up a whole lot um, that I would have out of a regular fishing boat. I mean, I'm using a trolling motor, I'm using the spot lock and moving around on the lake map, looking at my sonar and making decisions based on that with plenty of room for two, two guys or more back here and fishermen spread throughout the pontoon. Here we go. Just, just hanging, he's just hanging. I'm gonna, it's a drop shot, so I'm not gonna feed him too long, but let him get it in his mouth. There's the weight. There we go, mm, Net. That's a good one. I think it's just a, just a nice eater, but hey, who, doesn't, who doesn't like those? That's a good one. There we go. Right in the net. It's a good pontoon walleye. Nice fish, right? Both family and friends and a, and a fish fry now and then, and that guy fits the bill. Perfect, perfect eater. Man, I've just been standing in the back corner. The transducer for the pontoon is right here, and I 
I'm looking at the Helix 9 up there and just watching fish coming through, fish coming through. So, and then with the bait like a drop shot, I'm just fishing that vertically instead of a Lindy rig in this case. And it's just a really efficient way to put the bait right in front of fish down there. And we'll box in hunkies. Nice work, man. Good fish. Woo! All right, we're good. Hey, break the ice on that one. <laughs> Left hanging in the dark. <laughs>
Nervous, nervous, nervous. Uh, uh, another one of those ru another baskies? Could be. Walleye. Fast on the net, bud. Hey, good job. Let's see if I can get around here. Here we go. Nice thing, I mean, we pretty much spend most of the time fishing off the back of the pontoon and that's how it's configured. We got our bait station back here with aerated live well. We got tackle trays below. We got our tool holder. It was spot lock up front. It just frees up the back of the boat for two guys to, you know, fan cast an area, work, work a live bait rig, jig, whatever. Another one, another nice eater, about the size of that first one. And we're gonna do a little fish fry, so we'll throw him in the box. Just another nice eater year class there on the drop shot rig with the chub. I didn't feed him that long, I just kinda let him hang on there for about five seconds and just reel set him with that light wire Nico hook. Sticks them real easy, so the basically the load on the rod when you're speed reeling, coupled with the light wire hook, drives that hook home. And your hooking percentages are really excellent. That drop shot really is an excellent live bait rig for walleye fishing. It's probably one of the more effective rigs out there. Wind is really blowing today, guys, so we just took a little break from walleye fishing to slip back behind some protected islands for smallmouth, and you can see there's a nice laydown tree and just some rock and rubble along this stretch. So we're just gonna transition over to some bass and see what happens. A little, little large. Little green one, huh? I think I can swing her, Ryan, is that all right? Yep. All righty, here we go. So what I did was kind of modify my drop shot rig. We'll get this one back quick. I was using a live bait rig on this. You can see I've got a fairly long leader line right here. But since I'm using a cross style bait, I wanted to shorten up that leader a little bit so that craw just hops around closer to the bottom. So what I did was I just tied an overhand knot farther up the line to secure that weight. So that way I don't have to waste a whole lot of leader material when I want to go back to fishing live bait, I just take that weight off and slide it on a knot that I have farther down the leader line. Pontoon boats are thought of as recreational boats for the most part by most people, meaning you go out, you cruise around with your family, sometimes you'll hook up a tuber or a skier, but in actuality, they make an outstanding fishing boat if you rig them out properly, and that's exactly what we did with this Lund LX Series 220 fish and cruise. It's a fish and cruise model because it has ample seating up front but the back end of the pontoon is optimized for fishing. It has a built-in live well, has built-in tackle storage, built-in rod locker, as well as some other fishing friendly features that really make it an effective fishing boat. Now we took this pontoon a step further by adding some specific boat control tools and a fish finder to make it really like any fishing boat. And if I walk up front by McKeon there, you'll see there's a trolling motor. This is a Minn Kota Altera. We chose an Altera because it gives us a one button push and stow deploy capability from anywhere within the boats. We have a fishing gate in here, which is cut out, which allows the trolling motor to stow and deploy without hitting anything. You'll also notice up here on the bow, on the starboard side is a eight foot Minn Kota Talon. It sits below the rub rail here, so it doesn't obstruct line of sight. And then in the back starboard side, there's a 10 foot talon. We use that for a couple different reasons. Number one, if we're in shallow water pan fishing, any shallow water fishing application, we'll deploy the talons. And at the console behind me, you'll see a nine inch LCD screen. It's about the right size for this pontoon. Gives us all the mapping capabilities we need, plus sonar technology to find the fish then we use these boat control tools like the shallow water anchor and the bow mount trolling motor to stay on top of the fish. We powered our pontoon with a 115 horsepower engine. For us, that was the right compromise of power and lightweight and efficiency, and we have all that with the 115. We hit the speeds we need to go take tubers out and get some good screams going, but yet it's quiet and it's fuel efficient. 
and the command thrust gearing on here is a little bit beefier, so we're able to get this pontoon up and out of the hole really quickly and ha just have really good throttle response throughout the power band with this engine. So the outboard, the boat itself, the boat control tools result in a pontoon that's truly rigged out to service all your family needs, whether it be fishing, cruising, just having a great time on the water. You can make a pontoon do whatever you want it to do and do it well. We had a little change of wind direction, so we we're able to slip onto one of our smallmouth spots. And something to keep in mind when you're fishing out of any boat is the length of the boat and where guys are positioned or where people are positioned in it. So when McKeon's in the back right now, casting a drop shot, I don't know, maybe 50 feet, let's just say, off the back end. The pontoon's 20 feet, and I'm casting, you know, another 50 feet off the bow. So combined, we're looking at roughly anywhere from 70 to 75 feet uh, radius covering water, bringing our baits back to the boat. And that's just a great way to break down a lot of structures, to spread out on the boat, one guy fishing off the back, and just fan cast your way around a good spot to try to find out where the, the fish are positioned on it. And that's kind of why I took to the front here. Got us some spot lock? Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, nice small. Yeah, a decent Ready? little. Ready? Ready? Oh, fish? Yeah. Cool. And that's why we kind of spread out and cover a little water. Pretty guy, kind of a real, real light mocha. On a Tokyo rig right here. New bait by VMC. Fishing that with a little crayfish profile on bottom, huh? Sweet. One critical tool in a pontoon that you may not always use when fishing out of a boat is a net. Every time we've hooked up today, the other guys went and grabbed the net, and we have a net with a telescoping handle. Bottom line is we're just a long ways off the water, so in order to quickly and safely land fish, you want a net to scoop the fish up, take care of the fish, handle the fish, let the fish go. So make sure you add a net to your pontoon arsenal. Absolute must. All right, guys, we just pulled up on our offshore hump, and this one is a smallmouth spot. What I'm doing is just pulling up on the spot with a split screen mapping and 2D sonar configuration. I'm looking at 2D sonar, obviously, to find fish or see fish, confirm the presence of fish. And then I hit spot lock when I see them. And keys were in position, so basically straight behind the boat is the cast to make. If you, if you were to take a look at my cartography right now, I have depth highlights set deeper from 26 to roughly 30 foot. I'm gonna shallow it up on this spot. The fish set up a little bit shallower. A feature that is really useful for any fisherman is the ability to color in a certain depth range. If I go into my menu right now and go over to Hummingbird Chart, I'm gonna scroll up to Depth Highlight. I'm gonna go change my depth highlight to 14 feet. Depth highlight range plus or minus two feet, so 12 to 16 feet is painted in green. That's the spot I wanted to see. That's the one that has a school of bass on it. And another tip is to use depth highlight in conjunction with shallow water highlights. So you can see here, that's red. I have zero to five feet um, selected for my shallow water highlight, which under the Humminbird menu is shallow water highlight directly adjacent to depth highlight. Use shallow water highlight in conjunction with depth highlight and you're gonna be able to run an accurate pattern on a lot, a lot of lakes. It's a really useful tool. And there's a fish right now, I'm gonna get back there. Tough wind conditions, there's no question about it. You can't, I can't overstate, and Keys will agree, the power of spot lock, that electronic, that electric anchor, you don't move position totally hands-free. It's really, really makes fishing easier. Yeah, he's just chewing on it. Trend setter. Ooh, there we go. I was having trouble getting bit on a crop profile bait. And some of these bigger red tails that we're using. Oh, ready, Ryan? Guppy. He's still digging. I think some of these bigger red tails that we're using these smallmouth are having a hard time getting them in their mouths, so I switched to a golden shiner on a shorter drop shot leader. This one had a pretty easy time 
Oh, and we're doubled up now, too. <laughs> we're on a little yeah. water and got the school fired up. Need the net, right? I don't want to. No, I got him. I, I don't want to lose this minnow. This little guy. Yeah. No, I got it. I'll boat flip him. <laughs> hey, you can see the size of the minnow compared to the fish. We're using some pretty big bait here, and it takes a second for those fish to get it in their mouths. Giant minnow, little bass. So we're in the middle of kind of a fall cold front right now, and what that means is the fish are in transition. You know, specifically right now we're fishing for smallmouth, so they're up on top of the hunt, hump most of the year, but right now they're transitioning off to the deep end. That's why we're catching a mixed bag of walleyes and smallmouth. Real set into them, there we go. Nice. Feels like, uh, feels like it could be a cutter. Yep, I might box this one, if we can get it in. Nice. There you go. Throw that in the pile. You just kind of hold them there in just light, light tension. They usually don't drop that minnow. Ooh, and then just a little reel set like that, that light wire hook nice. slips right in. And when they're this size, you can go like that. Nice. Just a nice, Nice little eater. Looks like we could be having a fish fry. Oh, I'm getting chewed on again here, Ryan. Let me let him chew on it one more time. Come on. Yep, that feels good. Here we go. Real set into him. Ooh. Ooh. This one's got shoulders. This one might be better than a cutter. I don't know. Nice. Oh, yeah. This feels good. You ready with that yep. net? Oh, looks, yeah, that's yep. a good one. Right on, right on. Oh, ooh. All right, buddy. Hey, that's the best Sweet. one we've seen all day. Yeah. You swing around over here. Yeah. Nice fish. Yes, excellent. Oh, yeah. Good way to end the day on a little better right, shoulders man. there. Well, I think we're going to call it there. It's been a bit of a grind today, but we've caught a few bass. We've caught some nice walleye. And I think we're able to show you that pontoons are a really functional fishing boat, especially when you get into one that has some built-in functionality, have some boat control tools, you can get out there and get after it and we had a good day. Absolutely, let's go cut them up. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.